All right, so there's definitely a lot of you guys that have been waiting for this one to come out. This is the all-new Insta360 Ace Pro 2. So if you've been in the market and looking for an action camera, we've had some recent releases. The GoPro Hero 13 Black, as well as the DJI Action 5 Pro. And if you guys haven't seen my full videos on both these cameras, make sure you guys check out the links above as well as down below in the video description. A lot of people have been excited about these, but they've been maybe possibly holding off and picking it up because they want to see what Insta360 has up their sleeve for the new Ace Pro 2. And I've been using the Ace Pro 2 for the past couple weeks now. In this video, I just want to go through all of the new features that the Ace Pro 2 has compared to the previous model, the Ace Pro 1. And I'm also going to have more in-depth videos going into a lot more details between these two right here, the Action 5 and the Ace Pro 2, as well as the GoPro. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel so you guys don't miss those videos. Now the first thing we'll talk about with the new camera is that we have an all new sensor on the Ace Pro 2, which is the same sensor size we have here on the Ace Pro 1, same as the DJI Action 5. The GoPro actually has a smaller sensor, a one over 1.9 inch. Now the one thing that is unique about the new sensor on this camera is that it is a new dual chip sensor. The first of two chips is a pro imaging chip which is supposed to help with noise reduction and processing the actual image and the second chip is a five nanometer ai chip which is supposed to help with performance when comparing that to the previous model the ace pro one we only had the five nanometer ai chip on this one we did not have the pro imaging chip on the ace pro one we have that now we have that dual chip here on the ace pro 2. Next, let's jump back to video resolution, and this is the big one because we have 8K resolution on both of these cameras. The Ace Pro 1 came in at 8K, 24 frames a second. Now here on the Ace Pro 2, we have 8K, 30 frames a second. Now having that 8K resolution is definitely beneficial in certain scenarios. The one thing that Insta360 did mention is that if you are gonna still be doing any action sports or anything where the camera's gonna be moving a lot, they don't really recommend shooting 8K with that footage, even though it does have stabilization but they recommend shooting in something like 4K 60 because also when you're shooting in 8K, it does take away some of the field of view options where when you're shooting in something like 4K 30, 4K 60, you have all of the stabilization as well as all of the field of view options. Now, speaking of shooting in 4K 60, the one upgrade we have here on the Ace Pro 2 is that we do have 4K 60 with the ability to turn HDR mode on. Next, we're talking about low light shooting. This was definitely a popular discussion, especially when talking about the Action 5 with their new sensor. The Ace Pro 2 definitely does really, really well in low light scenarios. Both of these cameras here have what they call pure video mode, which is a separate mode on the camera that you're gonna wanna turn on if you're shooting in really low light scenarios. DJI's Action 5 has a very similar mode, which they are calling super night mode. When it comes down to GoPro, we don't have any night modes here. Next, we'll talk about size, design, and weight. And if you guys are familiar with the Ace Pro 1, Luckily enough, the design is exactly the same. We do have some small changes here on the uh, door, like how the door button pops open and how it looks. So the button's a little bit different. Here on the bottom, we actually do have the same magnetic clips. So if you do have a bunch of the magnetic clips that you have on the Ace Pro 1, yes, they will work here on the Ace Pro 2. And as you can see here with the screens, the one update that they did make is that we do have a slightly larger screen on the Ace Pro 2. The Ace Pro 1 has a 2.4 inch touchscreen. And here on the Ace Pro 2, we have a little bit bigger 2.5 inch on that touchscreen. And if you guys aren't familiar with it, it is a touchscreen that you're able to flip up from the back. So if you want to use the camera just like this and look at the screen, it is a full touchscreen. And then if you want to vlog, you would turn it around. And this right here is not a touchscreen, so you're not able to change any settings. The idea behind that is you can now flip up the screen there. And then when you want to vlog, you just look at the screen just like this. Also in comparison to the Ace Pro 1, it is a little bit brighter than the version one. Also the pixel density is a little bit higher on the Ace Pro 2. Now the first pro with a little flip screen like this is that you are able to adjust the camera or mount the camera in multiple ways. Or if you wanted to hold the camera from the top, you can now do that and flip the screen up. So if you wanted to shoot low angles, you can actually bring the camera really low and then still see your screen here at the very top. That ability to view your screen at multiple angles is a really nice feature to have. The one thing I did notice though is that it does come at a price as far as size goes. As you can see here, comparing this one to the much smaller DJI Action 5, if I were to put the screen back down, you can actually see here from the side, it is a fatter camera, both from the 
side view and then the front, you can see that the Action 5 is a much smaller. Tossing these on the scale, the Ace Pro 1 comes in at 180 grams. Ace Pro 2, 177 grams. The GoPro Hero 13 Black, 157 grams. And the DJI Action 5 comes in at 147 grams. Now being that this camera is an 8K camera, the one feature that is nice about it is what they call clarity zoom. What's really nice is that if you are shooting in 4K, so if you're shooting in 4K 60, 4K 30, and you wanted to zoom in on a subject, all you have to do is double tap on the screen and you are now able to zoom in two times and not lose any of that quality because like I said, the camera has the ability to shoot 8K. So if you're shooting in 4K and you two times in, you're not gonna lose any of that quality and you can do it simply by tapping right on the screen. Now, if you're the type to wanna use your action camera for photos, the Ace Pro 2 does come at a higher 50 megapixel photos. On this one, we have 48 megapixel on the previous model, the Ace Pro 1. The DJI Action 5 comes in at 40 megapixels and here with the GoPro, 27 megapixels. And of course, being that these are action cameras, they are able to be submerged into water. As far as depth goes, the Ace Pro 2 can go down up to 39 feet, which is a nice bump up compared to the Ace Pro 1, which is limited at 34 feet. Next, we're talking about audio. And as you can see here on the very front of the action camera, especially when compared to the Gen 1 or Ace Pro 1 is that we do have the mic in the same location. But the one thing that is pretty cool about the Ace Pro 2 is that they pretty much added in a built-in wind muff right in front of the microphone. Now you can't really see it. It's actually a hard plastic here on the front with a bunch of holes on it, but you can slide it off. And once you do that, you see there's a little foam on the inside there. Now the one thing that Insta360 did mention is that if you are gonna take this or if it's raining or it's gonna go in the water, you're gonna wanna take this one off, like I said, because it is like a little foam here on the inside, little microphone material, and you wanna take it off because that thing is gonna get wet. They have another separate cover that has a little hole in it for the microphone that you're gonna wanna put over this. All right, we are at the Sky Tram here at San Diego Zoo and it is pretty windy up here all right we are at the sky tram here at san diego zoo and it is pretty windy up here how does the audio sound coming from the ace 2 pro ace pro 2 versus the gopro hero 13 how does the audio sound shooting 4k 60 on the ace 2 ace pro 2 and 5.3 k 60 on the gopro shooting 4k 60 on the ace 2 ace pro 2 and 5.3 k 60 on the gopro Now, speaking of audio, the one thing I do like is that you are also able to connect a wireless microphone to this camera, very much like how we could do on the GoPro, as well as the DJI Action 5. Now, one feature that the Ace Pro 1 actually offered was the ability to hook up something like your AirPods to your action camera. Now, with the Ace Pro 2, you are now able to hook up a wireless mic. So, right now, I have the DJI Mic 2 hooked up to the Ace Pro 2. How does the audio sound? It is hooked up via Bluetooth, and this is something that DJI has, as well as GoPro opened it up to hook up a microphone to it as well. However, the Ace Pro and the GoPro, you can only hook up one mic to your action camera, where the DJI Action 5, you're able to hook up two mics. But either way, we've got the water behind me, splashing, a little windy, and the audio is you're hearing right now is coming straight from the DJI Mic 2. How does the audio sound? hooked up to the Insta360 Ace Pro 2. Now you are able to sync up or link up one microphone to this camera on the DJI Action 5. You can actually hook up two microphones. Next, we're talking about battery and the battery life. And one thing, if you do have the Ace Pro 1, that's really good, is that the batteries are compatible with one another. So unlike the GoPro, where they came out with a completely new battery, the Insta360 Ace Pro 1 and the Ace Pro 2, have the same design battery, so you are able to swap those out. Now, as far as battery capacity, they did bump it up. The Ace Pro 1 had a 1650 milliamp battery. They bumped it up now to an 1800 milliamp battery. Now, the one thing I did notice is that if you do wanna have the longer battery life on the Ace Pro 2, they do have a feature here, which is called Endurance Mode. Now, the one thing I did notice is that when I turned on Endurance, if I go to Endurance, hit Enable, 
Now I'm only able to now shoot in 4K 30. So it actually took away a frame rate. So it took away my 60 frame option as well as my, it took away my action view. The endurance option is really nice if you know you're gonna stay within a certain parameter, a certain setting. Next we'll talk about field of view and they bumped up their field of view on the Ace Pro 2 to 157 degrees, which is a couple degrees more than the DJI Action 5. We just keep getting wider and wider, which is actually not bad because their wide field of view has a little bit less distortion than even something like the GoPro. For some reason, the GoPro, when it's on a very wide field of view, the edges get really, really warped. We're here on the Ace Pro, it's actually not that bad. Now when it comes down to stabilization, Insta360 has what they call flow state stabilization. The GoPro series has what they call hyper smooth and DJI, theirs is called rock steady. When it comes down to image stabilization on all these cameras, they all do really, really well. I don't think there's one camera that really stands out to be the, you know, the best one. I think they all do a really solid job. Another couple features we have here on the Ace Pro, which we also had on the Ace Pro 1, you do have things like gesture control. So if you have your camera out on a long selfie stick and you wanted to be able to control it, and also if you wanted to do something like pre-record, you also have that option here on the Ace Pro 2. Also a really nice feature that they added here on the Action 5. Another feature we have here is the ability to sync up via time code. So you do have that time code ability to turn it on and off on this camera. So if you wanna sync it up with other cameras, other devices, you have that ability here on the Ace Pro 2. Next, we'll talk about memory and storage. And if you guys saw my previous video on the Action 5, the one thing I did like on here is that we do have internal storage on the Action 5, something that we do not have on the Ace Pro 2. Was really hoping we would get it this round, but apparently we did not. We can only use a SD card on this one as well as an SD card on the GoPro. The Action 5 is the only one that has that internal memory built in. And very similar to that pre-recording option, we actually now have a feature called dash cam. So you're able to hook up your camera to your car and you can actually set a bunch of different parameters on here on how you want this thing to record. What's really nice is that you can actually allocate a certain amount of your storage that's on your card strictly for dash cam. So what it'll do is it'll automatically continuously loop and record. And then it doesn't actually take up the entire memory card. Now, of course, besides the standard photo and video mode, we have a bunch of other options here on the camera. When you swipe through on the back, you have pure video, which we talked about, which is a really good setting if you're gonna be in low light or really dark scenarios, you have pure video. Next, we have time shift. We also have time lapse, dash cam, which we talked about, loop recording, you have slow motion. As far as slow motion goes, you have the ability to shoot 4K up to 120 frames a second. Next feature we have is star lapse. We also have burst photo interval shooting, and then we're back around to photo and video. And if you wanna to get to a bunch of those different modes or even presets, I do like the fact that they do have something similar to what DJI has, which is like a quick switch button. Another new feature we have on the Ace Pro 2, which we did not have here on the Ace Pro 1, is that they brought in a log profile. So if you plan on doing some post-processing, some color grading, now we have iLog, which well, they're calling iLog on the Ace Pro 2. The one thing I did notice though is that you do not have that log profile in 8K. So if I'm in 8K and I swipe over, the log option is off and it says 8K does not support iLog. Now one update we have on the Ace Pro 2 is that we now have a detachable front lens. And I know this is something that a lot of people were upset about that the Ace Pro 1 didn't have. Uh, because of the fact that if you were to damage your glass here on the very front, because it is an action camera and more likely you might take a fall, you might take a, a hit on the camera where you're gonna break that front lens off. And there it is guys, all the new features of the Ace Pro 2. It definitely puts some of the other action cameras up for a run, especially this one right here, the DJI Action 5. It definitely is a nice head-to-head -head battle with these two because when it comes down to low light and some of the image quality, the GoPro, I think just it just got left behind, especially with the new chips that are in the Ace Pro 2 as well as the DJI Action 5. These two action cameras right here definitely upgraded the important things, the user experience, the cameras, also the chips, the processor, the batteries. And also when it comes down to these three cameras, I am gonna break these down in a lot more in-depth videos and comparisons, so make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. You don't wanna miss out on those. As always, if you guys got some value from this video, a big like would be much appreciated. This is Aldrin Stasio with flightpath.com. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.